So this video tutorial is really to get at the use of image J. Uh, in this particular video, our focus is going to be on just simply image manipulation for brightness and contrast. Uh, but I'll do some other tutorials on quantization. But this one's just on image brightness and contrast. Now you can use image J or you can use your favorite image manipulation program. Let's say you have Photoshop on an iPad or let's you say on your Mac you've got some type of photo editing software, that's fine. All, any, any program that can, you, you can adjust brightness and contrast of images well, um, that, that will work for what I need. Um, you know, in terms of images, some of them are going to be really bright like the one that you see here, in which case you may not have to do a whole lot. What we're looking for is a black background with nice clear punctae, in this case, uh, these, these spots, right, because we want to see the lipid droplets. And so we could, you know, zoom in on this, right? And we could look at regions, right? And so I can, I can kind of look at this region here and you can zoom in on these things. And we'll look at that in a different video lecture. But for the purposes of today, you know, let's say that we're happy with this image the way it looks. So this is one of your images that are lipid droplets only, right? So LD, lipid droplets only, and these are your spots, right? And so these are the, what, the images that we're going to count or look at things with. But the other thing you may want to do is maybe you want to look at your other image in your data set. So you go to File, Open, all right, and then these are some other ones in your data set for this particular group. Let's go to Steric. All right, so I'm going to pull it into our window so that we can see it. And I'll pull up our toolbar, and this is the toolbar here. So that was how you open an image. So this one you notice is not, the spots are not quite as bright, and you have a really green looking background. And so, this is not how it looked on the microscope. So something about our software, when we download from the microscope to a computer screen, the computer, the resolution is different. And so a lot of times something that looks bright, I think I've got the brightness and contrast worked out on the microscope. When I get it to the computer, it's not quite the same. And so we don't want to over manipulate this work. So what we do want to do though is we want to make sure that the person visualizing this can see what it is that we're looking at. So we're going to go to Image, Adjust, Brightness and Contrast. And really you shouldn't have to mess with anything else. Um, and even this is not really going to be a huge deal. So what we want to do is we want to focus on the entire image as a whole, right? And we want to influence the brightness and contrast to make some of these spots more visible so we can make sure we can see all the data. And so we're going to raise the brightness and contrast, generally speaking, until we get a nice black background, right, and the spots are clearly visible everywhere. And so this would be a pretty good space. We don't want to go on the extremes, like you can, you know, start hiding data, right, if you go too far. Or in the reverse, right, it becomes indistinguishable gray background. So we want a nice black background. We want distinguishable marks. The same thing with the brightness. You can take that to far and start hiding things and making things appear that aren't there. So we want to showcase the data that is present. So some of these cells, notice, have lipid droplets in them. They're just not as bright as some of these other cell types. And that can be due to distance. Remember, this is a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional cell tissue section. And so that's something to keep in mind, too, is that you're naturally going to have layers within this graph. And so this would be something that would be very um, you know, a lot better than what we started with and it allows us what we want to be able to do is count or measure the area or count these dots within these cells. And so what we've done is we've, we've modified the brightness and contrast one so it's going to look good on the screen that we're going to go. So you can hit apply and then we can close it out and now it's saved this particular image. To save the file you can save as and what I would want you to do is I would save as uh, a TIFF, which is how these images came. That's the highest res image. However, I would also encourage you at the same time while you're here, after you manipulate the image, please also save as a different file type. I would recommend a JPEG. And here's why. When you go to do your, I'm saving you a step in the long run, when you go to make your website, some website design programs don't allow you to use TIFFs, which is our default. Um, in, in image J. It's also the default from the images that you get from the microscope. So I would also encourage you to save as a TIFF because that's going to be your highest quality file and save as a JPEG as well with the highest quality. 
and that will allow you uh, a range of abilities when you go to publish your results. So that would be my suggestion. So that is the basics for image manipulation. Uh, I wouldn't do anything else. There are other things that you can do here. We have, you know, and you can, if you want to, you can play around with some of these other things. But quite honestly, I think that is, you know, the maximum I would manipulate this data. We want to maintain your, your scale bar on here. And I like having multiple cells because you can kind of get a really good general picture. If, you know, maybe on the website you want to crop this image, and maybe you just want to show one really pretty image for the front of your website. First of all, I probably wouldn't pick this. I would probably pick one of your merged images. because I think the merge images are just really, really pretty. Uh, so we can do this mysteric acid image maybe. Um, and so you can see this is a really nice image by this group. And so on this too, you may you want to adjust the brightness and contrast. So I can do that really quick here. This one's not going to take a whole lot of adjustment. We're going to get a nice back, uh, dark background here. You can see how I've already improved this image greatly. Um, and so hit apply, hit X, and then you know you can save this as is, which is what I would do. And then um, you can also crop these images. And so, um, yeah, it wants me to select an area. I don't know which one do we like here. And you probably would pick a different one. Uh, but I like this one because it's kind of by itself. Um, so it's gonna make it really easy. So I can come in here. And you don't have to do this, but maybe there's a reason why you would want to crop your image. Um, and so it gives you the opportunity to do that. So once you highlight it, you can crop it. And so now we have this image here, and we can save this image and, and utilize it on the website for whatever reason we need. So this is data manipulation.